William Wyler has a pretty amazing story. He uh, was from France originally, and he emigrated to the United States, and he started working in Hollywood, worked his way up, and about the time that World War II broke out, he was becoming a Hollywood director, and he was incredibly patriotic, and he was willing to put his life on the line to serve our country. And he went to the head of the Army Air Forces, General Hap Arnold, and said, Sir, I want to contribute. What can I do? And Hap Arnold said, I'm going to commission you. I want you to put together a team, and I want you to go over to England. I want you to film heavy bomber operations. So that's exactly what happened. And so he got some very experienced hands in Hollywood, experienced cameraman, an experienced sound man, uh, went over to England. Unfortunately, all of their equipment was on a ship that was sunk by a U-boat, and it was sent to the bottom of the ocean. So right out of the gate, he had nothing but problems to deal with. Plus, he had to deal with temperatures as low as 50 degrees below zero. On these combat missions, those cameras were never meant to operate in those kind of conditions. So there were a lot of hurdles to overcome. In addition, they were facing the same kind of death and injury as the bomber crewmen were. They went on combat missions. Uh, in essence, they were exposed to the same dangers that the bomber crewmen were exposed to. They did also give some cameras to some bomber crewmen to film on their own. I think that's where we see a lot of the, the shaky footage that we see in the movie and in the outtakes. But uh, William Wyler, it is really his vision why we have this movie uh, that premiered in 1944, The Memphis Bell, The Story of a Flying Fortress, because he was sent over to record film to make a short, uh, what's called a one-reeler, a 15-minute short, kind of like a newsreel kind of thing. And as he went through this experience, he realized we have something really special here. We can inform the American public, we can record what these young men are doing, and we can preserve it and tell the story to the American public. So, and ironically, he, he won his first Academy Award while he was over in England. He had made a movie called Mrs. Miniver, which is kind of about a British family and, and uh, under, under the attack during the Blitz. And literally, he found out, well, Major Weiler, you've been awarded this Academy Award, and he's in the middle of working. So uh, that's an interesting sidebar. But he came back to the United States and he tried to convince Army Air Force's authorities, hey, we've got something here, I want to make a longer film. I want to make a, a 40 minute long film. And, and uh, there are letters back and forth where Army Air Force's leadership is saying, you need to get this done, you need to get this done. And he's saying, just let me get it, let me, give me a little more time, a little more time. So fortunately he was successful in convincing the Army Air Force's leadership that, that a longer film is, was the way to go. And what's interesting is that President Roosevelt actually did screen the film before it was shown publicly. And he said, every American needs to see this movie. And that's pretty much what happened. It premiered in 1944. At that point, the Memphis Bell crew were already known all across the country. They had gone on this huge war bond tour in the summer of 1943. They were in newspapers everywhere. Everywhere they went, they were, they were essentially the rock stars of their time. So the airplane and the crew were already well known. But then a year later, this movie comes out and naturally it premiered in Memphis, Tennessee. It's appropriate. And what's remarkable is that not only did it heighten the awareness of the Memphis Bell, their crew, and the heavy bomber campaign, it also established this record, this preservation of the story of the heavy bomber crews, because any of us can watch it today. And in this footage is actual combat footage of these crews dropping bombs on targets, airplanes going down, German fighters attacking, flak going off. Um, it, it is an incredible historical record. And what's even more remarkable is it's all in color. So much of the footage in World War II is in black and white. And, Having it be in color, I think, really makes it much more real.